I think it would be uh, proper to delay the floor vote uh, for up to, but not more than one week, uh, in order to let the FBI um, continue uh, to do an investigation limited in time and scope. And just minutes ago, President Trump did order the FBI to conduct a supplemental investigation. Here now to discuss what it all means, Fox News correspondent Greg Jarrett, who's also author of The Russian Hoax, and he's, of course, a former defense attorney, Danielle McLaughlin, liberal commentator, and Beverly Hallberg, District Media Group president. All right, Greg, let me start with you. Um, high drama over the last 48 hours, uh, certainly, the, uh, well, let's say the last 24-plus hours. And then this move by uh, by Senator Flake. What do you make of it all, and where do you think it could take us? Well, you could see this coming because it was Flake, Murkowski, and Susan Collins who were reticent about voting for Kavanaugh. They're concerned about their own political welfare, and so I, you know, to to the extent that Democrats were hammering yesterday over and over again, why not another FBI investigation? They succeeded. So that now these three Republicans have decided this is their hook. We're going to demand this in exchange for a vote. But I must tell you, it should take about a day to do this investigation. No, I mean, you can't find any evidence after 36 years, and the two principals have already testified in this case. You've already got affidavits from Mark Judd and uh, letters from the others. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure that, you know, more than a couple of hours. Well, are they going to go that find the house that this, uh, you know, that they the... can't find that. What are you going to find 36 years later? I mean, there's not any DNA evidence there. I mean, what are you going to find? Danielle? Well, you clearly we're not going to find any DNA evidence, but we might get closer to the time and the place uh, that the allegations are related to. We might get Mark Judge with a more fulsome statement on record. He was alleged to be in the room at the time. Let, we let might me ask you then, from, then from Danielle, Judge because uh, the Democrats, as Flake tried to explain this, and, and then later on, I think uh, maybe Senator um, uh, Lindsey Graham kind of, I think, articulated it even more. To Greg's point, this is what the Democrats demanded over yeah. and over and over again. Uh, we already know that there are Republicans who are on the fence. Apparently, Democrats have made up their mind, despite the compelling testimony from both the accuser and accused yesterday. Will this allow Democrats to have a more open mind about this and to put down the resistance one week from now? I think so. And, and, and in fairness, you know, we had Lindsey Graham saying he would plow through before he'd even heard Dr. Ford's testimony. So I think we had people who were very firmly entrenched on both sides. But what I will, I think this is actually a, the best thing for the GOP under these circumstances, because they, they are given, they're given the investigation a week. The Democrats are going to get what they want. The people who are on the fence on the Republican side, we only need 51 votes. Now we don't need 60 anymore. Kavanaugh will be confirmed. There won't be so many people incandescent <laughs> probably on either side. And maybe the midterms won't look quite so bad. What Democrats want is to stop Kavanaugh. And they will spare no shameful ploy and tactic to accomplish it. So, uh, you know, I'm waiting for the other 10 shoes to drop over the next week. Well, I, I hope you're wrong, Greg. And I, I, I really would like to believe, and I think American people want to believe, that they are people of their word when they say it will, it will be one week. And then we will go to conference. Well, you know what, Beverly, it's, it's hard to, to accept that there's any goodwill here seeing how this all played out, beginning, of course, with the, this, this letter that was sat on for so many weeks uh, when an FBI investigation could have been called for and completed long ago, and we could be well on our way to either up or down vote for Kavanaugh right now. So many weeks, and that's why even when it came to Senator Feinstein, she was even questioned about why it took so long. It was almost as she was on the stand yesterday, and I wish we could have heard more about that. I'm not clear. It's not clear who did leak this information and why she didn't present it sooner. But I do think when it comes to the FBI investigation, this has been the play by the Democrats all along. They knew there wasn't enough evidence to convict Kavanaugh, even in the public or the court of public opinion. So what they did, even in his questioning, was say, we need an FBI. FBI investigation, don't you think so? Because they knew that if there was an FBI investigation, it was a stall tactic. And I think what they're going to try to do, I hope this isn't the case, but I think what they're going to try to do in the next week is try, try to drum up more accusations against him. And I think we're going to be, sadly, in this place even a week from now, um, potentially looking at more time. Well, you know, and here's the thing, Danielle. I mean, Michael Avenatti is making all kinds of, uh, you know, crazy demands. But to Beverly's point, uh, you know, to, to, to find more uh, claims and, and and is he helping this process? Are you are you embarrassed by him as a, as perhaps the next candidate for the Democratic Party? I, I think because it feels like he keeps hijacking or attempting to hijack these these serious issues, 
and I think he makes it worse for your party and certainly worse for the whole the whole process. I agree that somebody that is so partisan is problematic when we're trying to get to the truth here. The idea that Democrats are somehow rustling up these people, uh, I think, is belied by Dr. Ford's testimony yesterday. I mean, you, I don't think you could watch that and think that this woman was making it up, that she was going to destroy her life, move her family twice, be on national television, be recognized for the rest of her life she, because some Democratic donor decided... She I was victimized by her own attorneys. You heard Lindsey Graham, he said, I must fell out of my chair when I heard her testify that she didn't know that this could have been private, held in her own home in California. There were three different letters that Grassley sent to Katz and Banks, the two lawyers who were Democratic activists and Trump resistors. And they apparently did not communicate this to their own client. It appears they were exploiting and manipulating her because the lawyers wanted a rancorous, acrimonious public hearing to damage Kavanaugh, but their client wanted it to be private and confidential. That is a violation of the rules of ethics. It's unconscionable. Even when, do, even when Senator Feinstein was uh, being asked about this, he seemed completely, in, in, uh, you know, grappling, if you will. And I thought at the end, because when uh, when Dr. Ford testified, she talked about her beach friends and the, uh, going in and out of the communications with the Washington Post three times over four days. Senator Feinstein alluded to them as perhaps being the ones who outed Dr. Ford. I mean, it's just she threw her under the bus. She threw her friends under the bus. And it looks so disingenuous in front of the American public. I do agree, and I would love to get to the bottom of who leaked her name because it really was that piece that brought her forward. Another important fact to remember is that she was getting hold of um, both politicians and, and the press before Kavanaugh was n nominated. Right. Right? So he was on a list. I don't think she's part of some big scheme to bring him down. And at the end of the day, elections have consequences, and the Democrats have to remember that. Beverly, what do you think the consequences are going to be of this? I think it remains to be seen what Republicans do. I know Jeff Flake, he's the one who decided to kind of pull the Trump card, so to speak, today on, on this whole process. But I, when I think it comes to Republicans, if they don't move forward with this confirmation, if there's a way that this is derailed, I think that hurts them immensely, tremendously in the midterms. But they have Trump, to be tough Beverly, on this. Pre but President Trump moved very quickly to say, OK, you know what, let's give it a week. Uh, because he has to. Uh, right. So, but this one week, do you think this is it? No matter what comes up, how crazier this circus gets, because we now don't know what can happen. Uh, it, it, you're saying one week from today, or one week from tomorrow, whenever it is, vote for this particular nominee. <laughs> If it's one week, I think that's good. I am not convinced it's going to be one week. What I am fearful of is, as you talked about Michael Avenetti, you talked about other accusations. I'm not talking about Dr. Ford and what I right. think. I think she did go through something. I'm talking about other things that can't be corroborated at all, people coming forward. And then you have to ask yourself, what do Republican senators do at that point? I think there's a chance we get no confirmation at all, and that is going to throw midterms right. into a tizzy. Yeah, no one's conflating Dr. Ford or her testimony with anything that uh, Avenatti has come up with or will over the next few days, believe me.